Most YouTube searches for Dodd Narrows result in clips of ripping currents and boats struggling in those currents. On the other end of the spectrum is a 50-minute presentation by the Nanaimo Power and Sail Squadron from June 2021. It is very informative, and we recommend watching it. There is a link above and in the description. In the next six minutes, we'll share some basics and two examples that informed our thinking. We also include some north and southbound footage as we share our lessons learned and the guidelines we set for ourselves. To start, let's look at Dodd Narrows holistically and share some common knowledge. For boaters from the U.S. and southern Vancouver Island, Dodd Narrows is on the most direct route to and from Nanaimo. Logs and other debris are common. In the south, many try to stay out of the currents by staying close to Mudge Island, while others try to get a clear view through the Narrows by staying close to Vancouver Island. Most vessels pass port to port, but we also have seen starboard to starboard. To the north, waiting boats prudently stay east and west of the Narrows, clear of the effects of the currents and also impossible to spot by northbound traffic. AIS would be great, but not everyone transmits. Currents can run to nine knots and routinely to six knots. In this clip, the current was 1.8 knots against us. In passages with currents, the vessel traveling against the current is the giveaway vessel and the one with the current is the stand-on vessel. One way to help with safety is to make a security call on your VHF radio, announcing your intentions. The prevailing opinion is that security calls should be limited to rare circumstances, and the average recreational boater should not issue a security call. This is where we will wade knee-deep or deeper into controversy with our opinion. We'll explain why we differ by showing you some examples that changed our minds. During this unexpected encounter, Emerson was the giveaway vessel and we slowed down and moved closer to shore than we would have otherwise. We wondered if the sailboat captain would have adjusted her approach and entry into the Narrows, had she known that we were just around the corner. Had we known where they were, we would have slowed down sooner. A number of things could have been done differently here. In our second example, we were southbound and slotted in between a very large yacht and a slower moving sailboat. The only security call we had heard so far was from that 120 foot yacht announcing its intentions. As we passed the log boom, this northbound commercial tug made a very quick standard security call. We missed most of the contents of the call. The voice was hushed and hurried. A minute or so later, the southbound sailboat also made a call, announcing their intention to transit the Narrows. This caused an immediate response from the tug and several friendly and productive messages were exchanged on Channel 16. The southbound traffic held off and the tug proceeded. As we show you some northbound and southbound footage of everything going well, here are some lessons that we learned from these examples. Your takeaways may be different. We'll close this video with common sense guidelines we use for ourselves. First, commercial and government VHF operators are very efficient, and announcements of any kind are often very quick and for us are difficult to understand. Keep in mind, no rewind. Second, the captain of the recreational vessel either missed the tug's security call or, as we did, did not catch enough of it to understand what sort of obstacle was coming their way. Third, security calls sometimes do not announce intentions but tell you what is already going on. At Dodd Narrows, this seems to be particularly true for northbound vessels. These vessels are typically already committed and it will be difficult and maybe even impossible for them to take evasive actions. Fourth, at times, an otherwise unnecessary security call can avoid a difficult or dangerous situation. 
it takes only once. Our conclusion is this. As recreational boaters with limited local knowledge and experience, we err on the side of caution. Going forward, we will make the call. Our sincere apologies to those in disagreement. When traveling north, there seems to be reduced opposing traffic near dusk. Southbound traffic only has a couple of options to anchor or moor nearby, or needs to have capabilities and the willingness to navigate in darkness. When southbound, opposing traffic will be minimal near dawn for the same reasons. We have observed plentiful debris in the water, and for that reason prefer to travel with the current. It gives us more time to avoid the logs and branches. Emerson does well with a GPS speed of at least three times faster than the currents. Speed through water is needed for proper steerage. Your boat's rudder may make do with less or require more. We always start our transit before slack. If we need to wait or slow down, the currents will weaken as we wait, improving conditions. After slack, the currents will gain strength and make it more difficult for Emerson if we are delayed. Because of the sight lines and possibly obscured oncoming traffic, we will set our VHF radio to low power and make a Securité call. Sorry to disagree with the prevailing opinion. We would rather be safe and sorry than just sorry. And again, we apologize to local VHF users for the extra radio traffic. Thank, Thank you, you for, for joining, joining us. us. Thank you.